When nations set their sights on the stars, they're not just racing for prestige, they're racing for power, influence, and the future itself. And right now, the battle for lunar dominance is more intense than ever. The United States and China both have their boots pointed toward the moon, but only one will set the pace for humanity's next giant leap. With SpaceX's Starship HLS at the heart of NASA's Artemis program, the stakes couldn't be higher. The question that keeps experts awake at night is this, can SpaceX actually deliver on time, or will delays open the door for China to plant its flag first? Strangely enough, the person who may have just shifted that balance isn't Elon Musk, nor NASA's usual senior leadership. It's Sean P. Duffy, the recently appointed acting administrator of NASA, a man many doubted could even handle the role. What changed his mind about Starship HLS after a private conversation with Gwyn Shotwell, SpaceX's COO, has set the entire space community buzzing. Could that moment have tipped the scales of the 21st century space race? Duffy stepped into NASA with critics already circling. His background was political, not technical. To seasoned space followers, that felt like a red flag. Leading NASA, after all, isn't like leading a government department. It requires balancing high science, cutting-edge engineering, fragile budgets, and global diplomacy, all while ensuring astronauts' lives are never put at unnecessary risk. Skeptics wondered, would this man really have the vision to keep America's lunar program on track? Or would Artemis spiral into another bureaucratic delay? Yet from day one, Duffy made it clear that he understood the gravity of the mission. On national television, he didn't shy away from framing Artemis as what it truly is, a new space race. America must dominate space, he declared, and Artemis must become as well-known and supported by Americans as Apollo once was. The statement wasn't just bold, it was deliberately provocative. At a time when public enthusiasm for space can easily wane between launches, Duffy was pushing to make Artemis part of the national conversation again. And behind those words was the unspoken truth. If America falters, China will not hesitate to seize the symbolic victory of returning humans to the moon. But words alone don't keep rockets flying. The reality was grim. SpaceX's Starship, the very vehicle that NASA's Artemis III lunar landing depends on, had suffered a string of setbacks. Flights 7 through 9 brought more explosions, structural failures, and investigation reports than triumphant successes. At the same time, NASA was weathering budgetary squeezes and staff cuts. To promise the American public a lunar landing in 2027, under those conditions, looked like either reckless optimism or outright fantasy. Critics like science journalist Robert Zimmerman openly called Duffy's timeline laughable. So Duffy did what few expected. He went directly to the source. No stage photo ops, no scripted reassurances. He sat down with Gwyn Shotwell and the Starship HLS team and asked the hard questions. If SpaceX was going to falter, he wanted to hear it straight from the people building the hardware, not through polished presentations. What he walked away with, however, was the opposite of doubt. Shotwell's confidence wasn't the kind of flashy, Musk-style bravado the public had grown accustomed to. It was measured, precise, grounded in engineering milestones and internal timelines. When she said Starship HLS was on track, Duffy believed her. To him, it was enough to state openly to reporters, if there's any holdup for Artemis 3, it's not going to be because of SpaceX. Think about the weight of that statement. For decades, NASA has been known for caution, for hedging promises, for the infamous delays are part of spaceflight mantra. And here was its acting leader essentially staking his reputation on SpaceX's ability to deliver. It was a bold pivot and one that put China on notice. So what exactly is happening inside SpaceX that gave Shotwell the confidence to quiet NASA's top doubts? Right now, Starship is evolving faster than any rocket program in history. Block 2 test flights are wrapping up with Block 3 hardware already rolling off the production line. Unlike earlier iterations, these ships aren't just experimental, they're being designed with the lunar lander in mind. Every test, every explosion, every anomaly is feeding into refinements that make Starship HLS closer to reality. By mid-2026, SpaceX aims for its first successful orbital demonstration with Block 3. From there, an uncrewed lunar test landing could follow later that same year. If both succeed, 
Artemis 3 astronauts may very well descend to the lunar surface in 2027. Yes, it's tight. Yes, it's ambitious. But compared to China's Long March 10 and its not yet complete lander, SpaceX's head start is undeniable. Beyond timelines, the technical upgrades themselves are staggering. The Starship HLS variant stretches taller than a standard Starship, about 55 meters, while keeping its 9 meter diameter. That extra height means more fuel capacity and a larger habitable deck for astronauts. Designed to remain in lunar orbit for up to 100 days, it's not just a transport vehicle, it's a temporary orbital home. Solar arrays stretching 18 meters each provide enough power to sustain communications, navigation, life support, and even the ship's massive elevator system, which will lower astronauts and equipment 55 meters down to the moon's surface. Unlike the Earth-returning Starship, HLS doesn't need flaps or heat shield tiles. Instead, it trades them for reflective white paint to keep propellant tanks cool under relentless solar radiation. It's a small but crucial detail. In space, even color becomes a matter of survival. Inside the crew module, astronauts will have 10 radiation-shielded windows, not just for breathtaking views of the lunar surface, but for critical visibility during landing and ascent. And speaking of landing, HLS carries 18 precision thrusters, more than any other Starship variant. Redundancy and control are the keys to sticking a safe touchdown on the uneven lunar terrain, and SpaceX has tested these engines rigorously. Then, there's the elevator, the single most human-focused design element. Standing taller than the Statue of Liberty, Starship HLS requires a way to bring astronauts down safely in bulky spacesuits while carrying heavy gear like lunar rovers or scientific payloads. Early mock-ups tested with Axiom-designed EVA suits prove not only feasible but surprisingly smooth. The elevator isn't just a technical necessity, it's a symbol of accessibility the bridge between human ambition inside a spacecraft and human footprints on alien soil. Each of these details reinforces why Gwyn Shotwell's confidence carried such weight. SpaceX isn't improvising anymore. They're building toward a very specific set of goals with engineering precision, and the momentum is undeniable. Meanwhile, China continues pushing forward with its lunar program, determined to land astronauts by 2030. Their Long March 10 rocket has shown promise, with static fire tests rivaling the raw thrust of SpaceX's Super Heavy. Their three-phase lunar strategy, orbit, land, return, has already hit milestones like sample return missions. But the gap remains clear. SpaceX's Super Heavy Block 3 can lift far greater payloads, operate with reusability in mind, and scale up launches through multiple pads in Texas and Florida by the time Long March 10th is ready for crewed missions. In other words, if SpaceX nails the next two years, China's window of opportunity may close before it ever opens. But here's the catch, and it's the suspense hanging over every test flight. SpaceX's Starship program doesn't move cautiously. It moves fast, breaks things, learns, and builds again. Flight 10, already on the calendar, is set to push Ship 37 and Booster 16 harder than any test before it. Starlink deployment at orbital altitude. In space Raptor reignitions. Heat shield stress tests with tiles deliberately removed to expose raw stainless steel. Even booster splashdown experiments pushing aerodynamic stress to near failure points. The risks are staggering, and the chances of failure, real failure, remain high. And yet, every failure brings them closer to success. Every anomaly report feeds into the next iteration. Unlike China, which relies on cautious incrementalism. SpaceX thrives on iteration at breakneck speed. That's the culture Shotwell represents. The culture that convinced Duffy to go public with his confidence. The stage is set. A few critical flights, a few key milestones, and humanity could be standing on the moon again before this decade closes. But the path ahead is as thrilling as it is perilous. And the world is watching every launch, every explosion, and every triumph with bated breath. For NASA, Artemis 3 isn't just about putting astronauts on the moon again. It's about reclaiming something deeper. When Neil Armstrong first stepped onto the lunar surface in 1969, the Apollo program wasn't simply a scientific triumph. 
It was a geopolitical victory, a message to the world that the United States could dream bigger, build faster, and achieve what no one else could. But that moment has faded into history, remembered more through grainy black and white clips than lived experience for today's generations. Sean P. Duffy knows this. His speeches emphasize that Artemis isn't only about technology. It's about rekindling that sense of possibility and national pride for a new century. Still, there's a razor's edge between inspiration and disappointment. Artemis has already faced years of delays, ballooning costs, and shifting deadlines. A single major failure in the next phase could shatter public trust, embolden critics, and hand China the symbolic win. That's why Duffy's gamble, staking NASA's credibility on SpaceX's progress, is both bold and risky. The public declaration that Artemis 3 is on track for 2027 isn't just rhetoric, it's a line in the sand. Meanwhile, SpaceX is working under crushing pressure. Its Boca Chica facility in Texas, where massive boosters roll out like assembly line titans, is buzzing day and night. Engineers race to iterate on Raptors, refine heat shields, and validate every subsystem that could make or break the mission. The failures of Starship's early flights still haunt the program. Fiery explosions broadcast worldwide. Yet, paradoxically, those explosions are what fuel the momentum. Each setback is dissected, lessons are extracted, and newer ships roll out more refined than their predecessors. No aerospace company in history has built at this speed, and no government agency could ever match it. The world is paying attention. China's space program, tightly controlled by the state and framed as a cornerstone of national pride, to Beijing, planting a Chinese flag on the moon isn't just about science. It's about prestige and reshaping the global order. This is the environment Duffy stepped into, inheriting a NASA at a crossroads. Critics doubted him because he wasn't an engineer, but what he brought instead was political savvy. He understood that words shape narratives, and narratives shape funding, public support, and global confidence. By openly embracing Artemis as a space race, he reframed the mission from a scientific curiosity into a matter of national importance. It was a risky rhetorical choice, but one that may prove decisive in securing the momentum needed to push Artemis forward. Behind the scenes, SpaceX's path is mapped out in grueling detail. After Flight 10 tests Starship's endurance under extreme conditions, Flights 11 through 14 will expand the envelope, orbital payload deployment, complex re-entries, precision booster landings, and eventually propellant transfer demonstrations in orbit. That last milestone is perhaps the most important. Unlike Apollo's tiny lunar module, Starship HLS is massive, and getting it to the moon requires multiple refueling flights in Earth orbit. SpaceX must prove it can safely transfer hundreds of tons of cryogenic propellant between ships without catastrophic boil-off or leakage. No one has ever attempted it at this scale before. If that hurdle is cleared by late 2026, the uncrewed lunar landing attempt becomes possible. A fully automated Starship HLS carrying no astronauts but loaded with scientific instruments could attempt a descent to the moon. If it lands intact, Artemis three astronauts will follow soon after. If it fails, the schedule could slip, and with it, America's chance to beat China to the lunar surface. The tension is palpable. Will the next launch end in fiery failure or history making success? That's the drama playing out live in the skies above Texas and across live streams watched by millions.
And yet, there's another layer to this story that often goes unnoticed. Artemis is not Apollo Reborn. This time, NASA isn't building every piece itself. It's relying on partnerships with SpaceX, with other contractors, with international allies like ESA and JAXA. The moon of the 2020s is not just an American destination. It's the foundation for a multinational presence, a stepping stone toward Mars and beyond. That's why SpaceX's Starship HLS matters so much. It's not just one spacecraft. It's the proof of concept that private companies can build the infrastructure of the future. Imagine, a decade from now, not just a single lunar lander, but a fleet of reusable ships cycling between Earth and the Moon, lunar bases supplied by commercial cargo runs, astronauts rotating in and lunar mining, water extraction, and the first whispers of interplanetary trade. That's the vision Duffy has hinted at, though he keeps the immediate focus on Artemis III. He knows that people need a first step before they can see the staircase. The moon landing of 2027, if it happens, will be that step. A singular moment broadcast worldwide, watched by billions, inspiring a new generation to dream bigger. But the truth is this, it could all collapse. If Artemis slips too far, if SpaceX fails to deliver, if China lands first, the narrative changes instantly. America would be seen as stumbling, no longer the uncontested leader in space exploration. China, meanwhile, would claim the mantle of lunar pioneer for the 21st century. The countdown has already begun. The world is watching. The rockets are ready. And destiny is waiting on the launch pad. So stay tuned, because this story is far from over. If you don't want to miss the next chapter in humanity's race back to the moon, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Because the journey to the stars is only just beginning.